In Excel, you can create dependent drop-down lists. Here, for example, you can select a type of produce. So I'll select fruit. And then in this drop-down, we see a list of fruit. If I select vegetables, the next cell shows just the list of vegetables. These are based on lists on another sheet. So here's the list, and this is the produce category. And then we have a list of fruit. And you can see its name here is fruit. And here's a list, and that's the vegetable list. So to set that up, we use data validation. And on these cells, if I go to the data tab and click data validation, we can see that we're allowing a list, and the list is equal to produce. In this group of cells, going back to data validation, again, we're allowing a list. And this time, we use the function indirect and then a reference to the cell to the left, which is B2. So we're saying create a range based on whatever name is in cell B2. And that's what the indirect function does. It creates a range reference. We'll click OK. Now this works well most of the time, but you can run into a little problem where here we've got vegetable and cabbage, but someone could come back here now and change that to fruit so these selections don't match anymore. So here, we don't want people to go and select the wrong produce type after they've put something in this cell. You should only have a list here when there's nothing selected in the item cell. So we're going to change this formula. Going back into data validation, we don't want it to be equal to produce. We want it to check the next cell. So we're in cell B2 now. We want it to check cell C2 and see if it's empty. So here we'll type equals if open bracket C2 equals an empty string, which is two double quotes, and then a comma. If that cell is empty, then show us the produce list. So we'll just type produce, comma. And if it's not empty, we want that drop down to not even work. So we're going to use the indirect function here and create our own range. So indirect, open bracket, and I'm going to type the name of a range that doesn't exist. So double quote, then I'm going to type fake range. Double quote, close the bracket, and close the bracket for the if. So if C2 is empty, show us the produce drop down. Otherwise, it's going to try and show this fake range, which doesn't exist. So we'll click OK. Now it tells us that that's going to result in an error. So we'll go ahead. And now here, if I click, the drop down doesn't work. But if I go to the next cell, the cell to the right is empty. So the drop down shows us fruit and vegetable. I can select vegetable and rutabaga, but I can't go back and change that to fruit. If I want to change it, I would have to clear out that cell and then go back and start over. So if you're concerned about people mismatching the choices here, use that technique to block them from changing the first dropdown after they've made a selection in the second dropdown. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.